Well, what's up, everybody? And welcome back to another edition of Thrive, where we are committed not to sinking, not to surviving, but thriving. Mm -hmm. This is the life Jesus offers. This is the light we are in pursuit of. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly or have it to the full. Not sinking, not surviving, but thriving. Doing the best I can in the season I'm in with the resources I have available. And so we just speak that over you. We just speak that blessing. We confer that blessing over you that, that God's grace is gonna equip you to thrive in the areas you need to thrive in. And Pastor Dudley, man, I'm always excited to begin our time together with invoking the presence of God. Yeah. You know, we're getting ready to, we're at our church, Change Church, and if you don't watch us on Sunday mornings, you got to tap in. Tap in. I mean, tap in. <laughs> yeah, no matter where you live, we got global <laughs> members from literally all over the country and certain parts of the world. Uh, but we're in a season of, um, of radical pursuit. That's what Lent is mm -hmm. about for us, mm -hmm. radical pursuit. And I cast a vision actually this past weekend of a way our church is going to be leaning into it mm -hmm. differently. And um, we're doing we're doing unusual seeking. Mm -hmm. We should always be seeking him. Mm -hmm. But in this season, we're doing it unusually. We're seeking the presence of God because there are certain things that only the presence can do. One of my mentees who's an entrepreneur in the Midwest, he called me or he left me a voice memo recently and said, you know, you said something to me in a conversation, PD, that he said, I never forgot that prayer does things. The presence mm -hmm. does things that my personal development won't. <laughs> it's, it's, there are certain things only God can do. And uh, that's why we commit this time to, to prayer and uh, praying over your needs and your request. Uh, believing that God is a God who answers prayer. So Edward Phillips, we're praying for you today. Wisdom and guidance. We believe in God for that. Praying for Elizabeth Corley. Praying for your employment. Mm -hmm. uh, Jaya McFarland, physical healing. And I just want to remind you, and um, I don't know if we emphasize this enough. God still heals. He still heals. He's a healer. There are so many, Balm and Gilead, yeah. great physician, yeah. Jehovah Rapha, right. like all these words in scripture mm -hmm. that speak to God's ability to fix a body he made. Oh, come on now. He made it. He can fix it. Yeah. And so that's what we believe for. We believe whether that healing comes directly from God or indirectly through some medical intervention or innovation. Yeah. We're believing for your healing. Yeah. Then we have uh, Joseph Stevens. For financial provision, we know that God, that's what Paul said. Yes, sir. And he will yes, supply sir. all of our needs. All need. of it. Bye. And we've got Keith Gabriel. I love this prayer. Mm -hmm. Prayer request. I love all of them, but this is really unique. Mm -hmm. He's praying for faith. faith. And so if you say, you can't pray. Well, that parent of that boy that was having the seizures or mm -hmm. whatever, um, the, the father, mm -hmm. Jesus said, hey, now, um, do you think this can happen? Do you, do, do you, all things are possible to him that believe? He said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. My faith is struggling right now. Uh -huh. And uh, I need help in that area. So we're praying for you, Keith. And then we're praying for Nakasha Hall. We're praying for your relationship, praying yeah. for you in the area of relationships. 100%. God is a God that will shift a relationship and he we're can. believing that for you. Yep. So Father, we just lift up to you today every single request represented in in the chat and these requests that we've yes, lifted God. up before you. You are even those that are struggling secretly and silently. You are the God who hears in secret. You will reward us openly. Yes. So today we come to you confident in your faithfulness. Yes, Lord. You're faithful. Mm. You're reliable. You're consistent. You do what you say. You're not a man that you should lie. You're not the son of a man that you would repent or change your mind. Yes, God. If you said it, you're going to do it. If you spoke it, thank you, God. You will bring it to pass. So I lift up every request, yes. whether it is for physical healing, financial provi provision, relation shifts, whether it is for debt, elimination, freedom. You're the God who sets free. 
not just free from emotional bondage. You, you set us free from economic bondage. Yes, Lord. You said we be lenders, not borrowers. You said it to Israel. Yeah. We apply it to ourselves. Yes, Lord. You engrafted us into the tree of Israel. Mm. So we claim that promise by faith. And so to every need, Father, would you look on it? And would you respond to the faith in this room, virtually, all over the world? Yes. And would you meet these needs in Jesus' name? Amen. Amen. Well, drop some fire in the chat to just express by faith you believe it's already done. It's drop already the fire done. in the chat. Yes. Dr. Dudley, man, yes, I'm, I'm excited about tonight. We're, we are... Um, we're in this in this book of Hebrews, and I love God's word. Mm -hmm. And we're in this series called "It's About to, to Get, get better. better." Yeah, that is a that that should be a confession. Yes, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That should be a confession for 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 people in 2024. Right. No matter what they face, your confess your faith confession should be, yes. "It's about to get better." And Pastor, I'm enjoying this, man. Yeah, I'm enjoying all throughout, but I think it's it's a little bit something different on this. A hundred percent. About to get better. Yeah. And, and you said some earlier, and I think one of our uh, core convictions uh, here at Chain Church is we to pursue hunger. Yeah. To passionately. Yeah. To radically. Yeah. Aggressively. Yeah. Pursue growth. It's one of our God. core values. That's right. Hunger. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why we take seasons like, and we do our mm -hmm. own. We at Change we customize a lot, mm -hmm. so we customize kind of this Lent season to say, mm -hmm. no, this hungry season. Yeah, yeah. That's what that's what even fasting is about, right? Mm -hmm. It's about breaking the app breaking the appetite in one area, mm -hmm. so you in the wrong area, yeah. so you can increase the appetite in another right. area. Right. And um, so it's um it's it's exciting, and I'm excited about this teaching today, man. Yeah, uh, guys. So we're we're gonna be exploring uh, chapters five and six of Hebrews. So uh -huh. uh, our our series subject is it's about to get better. And we're using the book of Hebrews as a blueprint mm -hmm. to get better, to experience upgrades mm -hmm. this year. And today's lesson is called sifting, excuse me, shifting and sifting. Sift. You got to sift and shift, shift if you want things to get better. better. <laughs> yeah. And this is what I love about Hebrews, especially chapters five and six. Mm -hmm. I think they reveal to us that things can only get better. If we accurately and appropriately manage, watch this now, mm -hmm. this is important, mm -hmm. sifting and shifting. <laughs> now, when we say sifting uh -huh. and shifting, what do we mean? Doc, give, give them, give them a, a, a working definition of, of sifting. Sifting. This, listen, y'all, this is powerful. Sifting is the process of isolating. Wait, I almost felt Pentecostal. Wait, wait, read, 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 read. All right. The process wait, of isolating. Wait, it's a process. Uh huh. It doesn't happen mm -hmm. immediately. Right. It happens <laughs> incrementally. Uh huh. Come on, it doesn't happen overnight. It happens over time. Read. I said the process <laughs> of isolating or separating that which is useful. Wait, 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 <laughs> wait. <laughs> Wait, wait. The process uh -huh. of isolation. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Most people, no, I'm not saying most people. Sometimes when people experience isolation, mm -hmm. they don't realize God's using it. Watch this as a as a precursor to their elevation. Lord Jesus, that isolation isn't always an indication that you should feel like you're suffering. Mm -hmm. Isolation should feel like you being set up. Set up. To go up. Mm. Isolation. Read. Read. <laughs> useful from that which is useful from that which is unuseful wow. and or wanted from that which is unwanted. Catch that. That's powerful. Sifting. And when I, when I think about, come on, come on. <laughs> when I think about various seasons in my life. Come on. I know we talk about God being a savior, mm -hmm. but I want you to know God is also a sifter, that he will orchestrate mm -hmm. a process mm -hmm. where he isolates uh -huh. or separates, separates that which is useful from that which is unuseful. Now notice now, it's not just separation of that which is moral from that which is immoral. Because uh -huh. just because it's not immoral doesn't mean it's useful. I love it. 
I love that distinction. I love it. You got me? I love it. And just because it was useful in one season, mm -hmm. come on here. Come on. Come on here, church, doesn't mean it's useful in every season. Yeah. And what God does is he, it, he, he sifts. Come on here. Not because, watch this, something's wrong with it. Mm. He sifts because it's no longer right for you. Yeah. And, and Pastor, I, I, I believe that some people need to make this distinction. Mm. It may not be bad, but is it making you better? That's good. That's right. good. It, it may not be bad, but is it keeping you stagnant? Yes. Is it, is it keeping you stuck? Yes, yes, yes. And sometimes we refuse yes. because I believe sifting is an, is an expression of detachment. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. So, so, so it's not bad. And sometimes because it's not bad, we refuse to detach or we refuse to allow God to allow us to enter a season of shift, That's of it. sifting. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. The question isn't, see, and here's what, you know, uh, earlier this year, I did a, a series called It's Up mm -hmm. and I talked about, yeah. and so it was about um, elevating the spiritual part of your life, right? Mm -hmm. And so I... I talked about this idea of spiritual settling. Mm -hmm. I said spiritual settling is the worst kind of settling because it's unconscious settling. Mm. It is not like all other settling you do intentionally. Right. Whether you want to admit it or not, you know when you settle in relationship. Yeah, right. You know what you like. Yep. You know what you like. Yep. And you know when you're sitting across from them at dinner, that's not what you like. Right. You, you're talking about they got a good personality. <laughs> Come on, you know, like, you know, I like their spirit. Uh -huh. You know, you don't, uh -huh. or you, like, so whether you're settling in terms of your physical preferences no. or you're settling in terms of e economic preferences, like, you know, when you kind of compromising a bit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know that physically, you know, when you, you know, when you're settling professionally, correct. You know, when something is giving you finances, but not fulfillment, mm. come on. Mm. Right. You know that right. you, 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 you know that. You know the difference between being in an environment where you're celebrated versus one where you're tolerated. Yeah. You know that. Mm -hmm. But spiritually, it's a different kind of setup. Yeah. Because you don't know you're doing it. it. Because what happens is, watch this. Your life in this season can be better than it was in the last season and you still be settling. <laughs> so that's what makes that kind of settling yeah. deceptive. Yeah. So it's like e Israel got out of Egypt, right? And they go into the wilderness. But when they made a decision in Numbers 13 mm -hmm. not to go into Canaan Canada. because of the, the so-called giants in the, the land, land. Mm -hmm. what, did, what did they do? Well, you know what they did then. They settled. settled. They were better than where they were, were, but they weren't as good as they could. It was not bad. Correct. But it wasn't making them better. It wasn't making them better. That's so good. That's so good. Sifting. Sifting. But here's another one, Pastor. We not only have to manage the sifting, mm -hmm. we've got to manage shifting. shifting. Now, let's give them a working definition of shifting. Shifting is the act of changing positions or locations. Gosh. See, you see the relationship between it, it, these it, There's a direct relationship <laughs> because you can't shift until you shift. <laughs> and sometimes we don't just shift to the, next, uh, to the next level. Come on here. We have to shift to it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, some of us are waiting to shift, but God is saying, wait a minute, like sifting always precedes shifting. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. And That's a word. That's a word. You can't, you, you know, you, 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 some, you just can't shift to the next level. You yeah. got to shift to the next yeah. level. Yeah, here it is. And, and here's, what's, here's what can be like really disorienting about mm -hmm. um, these two realities. What can really be disorienting is this, is that God will engage in the activity of sifting and shifting without making announcements. <laughs> so all you know is it feels like your life is yeah. being turned upside, upside down. down. Stuff is all you on. know is you feel like relationships are getting weird and you have no explanation mm -hmm. as to why there is distance right. between you now. That And, and, and it's, it's interesting because God's engaging in the activity, but he hadn't made an announcement. Mm -hmm. So he's doing something, but he hadn't told us what we're doing. Right. So in our mind, we can be thinking life is lifing. When the truth of the matter is, God is God. -ing. And I'm going to tell you, God, there are sometimes he announces his activity. Mm -hmm. More often than not, he doesn't. Right. And then there are sometimes he gives you an explanation on the other end verbally. But more often than not, he doesn't. You got to live into an explanation. He doesn't tell you why. 
you went through it. You get to the other side. And when you step into that new season, you see why you went through it. Uh So he answers you with what you see, not what what he said. said. So some of you are trying to make sense out of something and you just need to know God has you in a season of sifting so that he can create some shifting in your life. Pastor, this, this is, um, this is another thing when it comes to, you got to have the right people in your life. Yeah. They can kind of help you That's right. articulate, interpret, or even understand the shift. That's it. Because you remember when we, went out, when we went to divinity school and you called me mm-hmm. and I was in the bed for like three or four years, three or four days, didn't want to get up, didn't want to eat. Don't bring it up now. We can't talk we about it. We can talk about it. No, no. I'm free now, Doc. No, I'm free. We can't. I'm free. We can't give them too, we we can't can't give give too much. Too, we can't give them too much detail. But, but there let's, was a season of shifting. Uh, let's be authentic, but okay. not so transparent. <laughs> but there, there, was, there was some shifting. Uh-huh. God is the... Can I just say... Oh, now, do y'all remember the movie... Now watch this. I don't, I don't need the spirit of a Pharisee to jump up here now, <laughs> okay, right? Yeah. I don't want to, and I don't, because I'm I don't do well with the Pharisee spirit no, too, no, right? So no. that's when that that's when that part of Jesus' personality they clap back. Yeah, that's when that yeah. one jump up on yeah, me, yeah. Like when that spirit of a Pharisee, because uh-huh. the spirit of the Pharisee <laughs> is it's watch this unconsciously ignorant, mm. but arrogant. Mm. So ignorant doesn't mean uninformed always. Sometimes ignorant means misinformed. Right. Ignorant doesn't always mean the absence of information at all. Right. It means the absence of right information. Right. So people can feel real strong and be wrong. Yeah. That's what Pharisees were. Yeah. They were just adamant that Jesus was not the Messiah. Correct. You good. not the, like they, I mean, just adamant, mm-hmm. just strong and wrong. Right. That's the spirit of the Pharisee, right? And so I don't deal well with that spirit. So if, if you got that, God bless you, but just stay out these comments. Yeah. Okay. We love you in Jesus' name. Here it is. Just, I'm just, y'all, some of y'all remember the movie Boomerang? Uh-huh. <laughs> We're heading Murphy. And what goes around, come around. Well. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. <laughs> no. I, don't, I don't like the way you set this up. I don't like the way you set this up. <laughs> y'all heard him, y'all. He said, what goes around, come around. Wait a minute. Wait That's a minute. That's the point of the movie, dog. Nah. Now, wait a minute. He brought this up. I didn't bring this up. I would never bring this up. Right. But you want to bless the people with your testimony. We got to bless them. Since you testify, I'm not testifying. You te- this is your testimony. This is my testimony. Right. Don't bring my but, testimony. But the set, the setup, though. I'm just, I talked the setup. Like, you know, around, clumped around. I, I feel kind of judged a little bit. <laughs> the question is, did I lie, though? You didn't lie, but okay. I feel good. Right. I feel judged. Two things can okay. be right. All right, all right. <laughs> Let me retract that statement. I'm gonna, re- I'm gonna retract. Strike from the record. What goes around comes around. Strike that from the record. I'm, re- I'm reclaiming my time. Okay, okay, all right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Here, here. All right. Here it is. But in the movie, <laughs> what? Now you know the guy in the movie's name is Marcus. Yeah. 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 Eddie Murphy's name. Yeah. It was Marcus. That was his name. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the point that I'm making. My dear brother, I was in New Jersey in uh, at Princeton. He was in North Carolina at Duke, and mm-hmm. I called and checked on him one a few days. And every time I called him, he was in bed, and I knew he should have been get ready to go to class when I was calling him at a certain time. Or getting out of class. And he was always in the bed. Uh, and um, he had a boomerang season. <laughs> Let's just put it that hey, way. Hey, I was hurting, man. Boomerang season. Now, what's our point, though? I don't even remember. what. what why are we just talking about this? Like, when when God is doing something that we don't understand. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When yeah. it doesn't make sense to us. It was sifting. It's good always God good about. to have somebody else in your life. Yeah. And you are able to speak into me and say, hey, man. This may, this God's way of sifting yeah, you, yeah, in order yeah. to shift you to mm-hmm, a new season. Mm-hmm. It was, it was sifting someone from you, right, right, and also sifting. Watch this, mm-hmm. your view of you. Come on, that's right. That's you right. got me. Because that, right. my thing was like, okay, right. wait, 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 right. wait, wait, wait. Now I understand this is heartbreak, whatever. But I know you. I've known you all of these years. Correct. Correct. I know the hand of God is on your life. Correct. I know that didn't fit with your future. Come on. I know that wasn't aligned with your assignment. Mm. And you're mourning over what God's rejected. 
And uh, so sometimes when you forget who you are, mm -hmm. you need people in your life who remind you who you are. And refuse to let you sell. Yes, sir. You did sir. not let me sell. Yes, sir. You would not let me sell. Yes, you sir. Get up, man. What you doing? Get up, man. I had shade, <laughs> man. I had did nothing, man. <laughs> See, this is why at some point, too, we're going to have to do a teacher on Ephesians 4. And we want to explain to y'all ministry gifting. Because mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. you need to know the ministry gifting, not just the spiritual gifts, right. but Ephesians 4, the ministry gifts that some people call the motivational gifts that are in Ephesians 4 so that you understand what you're going to get from certain friends. Because right. their ministry gift Correct. is going to is going to create a certain type of love language. Mm -hmm. So because mine is apostolic, mm -hmm. if you know, so so if it was like way more shepherdish, mm -hmm. right? Then I would have been like, man, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Man, would you? But see, God knows the kind of friends we need. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? And so because that lean is more apostolic, it's like, I'ma love you not by comforting you in a pit. Mm -mm. I'ma love you by getting in it with a shuttle, shovel and say, let's come out. Let's come out. That's my love. We're out. not about to hug in it. We getting out. We getting out. And so some of us, some of our issue mm -hmm. is people want people in their life like them. Mm -hmm. And everyone that is like you, that mm -hmm. you like, mm -hmm. watch this. Mm -hmm. Everybody that is like you, that you like, can't lift you. Mm -hmm. That's good, Pastor. Man, that's good. We need some people in our life that's gonna live. That's gonna lift us. Right. It's gonna live. Yeah. And don't care how you feel about being lifted. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it shouldn't be harsh. Like the Bible, you don't need to be harsh right. or disrespectful, but you gotta love people enough to lift them, I think. Right. And you need different people in your life who do. Right. So some you need the comforter sometimes. Right. Like that person who's gonna do that. But you also need that prophetic voice, yep. like, all right, then you're going in the wrong direction. You need that apostolic voice that sees the, the Peter inside the Simon, that mm -hmm. sees the Israel inside the Jacob. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something we talk, we're talking really heavy leadership oh, stuff here right. now, or, or ministry stuff, because this is one of the things that you got to, when a person understands their ministry gifting, see, that's a shift some people need to yeah, make, yeah. just from spiritual gifts to ministry, ministry gifts, right. so that you understand because your ministry gift will make sense out of your, your spiritual, your spiritual gift, gift mix, right? right. Yeah. And how you're supposed to administer it. Right. And so um, the point that I'm making is <clears throat> that, that one of the things that people have to understand is just because there's an aspect of a person's wiring or leaning that agitates you doesn't mean it's not an asset to you. Does that make sense? Say it again, Pastor. Say it again. Just because there is an aspect of an individual's leaning, wiring, that might agitate you, mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's not an asset, asset to you. And I think a lot of times people, people miss that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So let's say like my gifting is apostolic gifting, and that means, um, part of that means I got a different set of eyes. Mm -hmm. I should be able to see the diamond that's covered by the coal. Mm -hmm. So it's really weird because the apostolic gift is going to mean I'm going to have a very high standard. Mm -hmm. But then I got high standard with great patience. Mm -hmm. That's good. Which can be confusing yeah, can if people be. are watching me handle right, people. Because right. they're like, don't he see what I see? And it's like, yeah, but I see what you don't. That's so good. That's, and you want good. me to be somebody different when I'm dealing with them. Right. Not realizing if I was somebody different, you wouldn't be around. <laughs> <laughs> And that's the key. That's the that, that's the key. Yeah, that's that that's the key. And and I just thank God, man, because correction or even that lifting, it's kind of like some, some good medicine is yeah. bad going down. Yeah. And so it's like, man, if I can just get through the agitation, I can reap the benefits of it being an asset. Yeah, that's right. You know what I'm saying? You, that's right. It's like, man. That's right. The agitation is the asset. That's right. That's right. And sometimes you got to manage or leverage that agitation in a way. To, to receive or reap the full benefits so of the asset that God has set up in your life. Yeah. And this is why we're leaning into this, guys. This is this is so, when I say this is key, mm -hmm. this is the kind of stuff that's really changed my life. Mm -hmm. And it's changed so many people's lives. Because the reason, let me say this again, the reason some things can't get better for some people is they don't know how to manage 
the sifting or the shifting. Mm -hmm. You can't always control right. the sifting or the shifting. But you can manage. Sometimes God. Yeah. That's but, but managing the sifting or the shifting is managing you in the middle yeah. of the sift. It's managing you in the middle of the shift. It's because that's the only thing you can manage. manage right. 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 So when I'm talking about managing the sifting, I'm talking about managing you when sifting is going on. God, I, 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 I feel like preaching. Go ahead. Is what I feel Let's like. go. No, Preach because up. here it is. Watch this. When the, you can't lose you because you lost them. That's some people's issue. Like, and did, did you catch that? Like, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's like you lost you because you, you lost, lost them. them. And God's like, that's one of the reasons I needed you to lose them because you didn't see so much of you was tied up in them. No. So what do you got to do? You got to manage you. Mm -hmm. So when I'm separating you from somebody you're getting you, your identity from, mm -hmm. now you got to manage the tendency or the temptation mm -hmm. to go back and try to bring go somebody back, back, into your life God. that God pulled out. Now, when you bring come on here. Yep. Yep. And a lot of times God tries to pull them out proactively, mm -hmm. not reactively. Correct. So the pulling out doesn't make sense. Right. So when God removes a person, like, it doesn't make sense. You're like, what's up? What? It, it wasn't, it's not that bad. And God's like, I'm trying to move them before the knife in your back. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to move them. I'm trying to move them before the knife is in your back. Right. Right. And that's what we got to understand. God knows the full, he knows the full picture. Mm. We don't know the full picture. Mm. Like he know, God knows his or her tendency. That's right. You know, he knows that they got the tendency to, to the, yeah. uh, the proclivity towards violence. Yeah. And God's saying, I love you enough. I'm proactively trying to do it. And I think sometimes God's love, I think our perspective always has to, has needs to be changed because sometimes uh, God's love is not expressed in what he allows to come into our life. Mm. But it is revealed yes, in what yes, he sir. allows to leave yes. or walk out about. Yes, yes, yes. Like that's love, eh? That now ain't punishment. Let's clarify because some people they, they okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't mean uh because some people they go home, they they're gonna misapply what we just what, said. Yeah, we, we don't just want that to happen. No. We do, we do yeah. not want that to happen. Yeah. Anyway, the point that we're trying to make is right. this this managing ourselves during these seasons of sifting and shifting are so key and critical. Mm -hmm. Because you can't really manage the season. Right. You can only manage yourself yeah. right. when you are in it. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think the 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 Bible, specifically Hebrews chapters five and six, mm -hmm. kind of reveal to us and expose some areas, mm -hmm. right, where there's got to be some sifting, so there can be some shifting. Right. So everything that we're talking about, the sifting and the shifting, this is what the writer of Hebrews is trying to get them to do. Mm -hmm. He's trying to shift them out of an old dispensation oh, into yeah. a new one. Mm -hmm. But in order to do that, he's got to sift. sift. Yep. He's got to remove mm -hmm. or separate or isolate those aspects of the old covenant that are no longer applicable. And if they will go through the sifting, they could experience shifting. Correct. Now, here's what's interesting, right? You have a lot more to say about the shifting than you do the sifting. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And so this this is where Hebrews five and six, um, I think, become really important because there's some sifting you embrace, mm -hmm. but there's some shifting you have to initiate. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm reading Hebrews 5 mm -hmm. and 6, yeah. I see a few areas they did right. that I think is important that we take into consideration because we may need to do also. Mm -hmm. So here's the first place they had to, they had to shift the way they saw. That's going to be key. They had mm -hmm. to be shift the, they had to shift the way that they saw. Shift the way that they saw what, PD? Number one, and, and what we got to think about too, they had to shift the way that they saw their priest. priest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hebrews uh Five verses one through six says every high priest is selected from among the people and is appointed to represent the people in matters related to God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sin. He's able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and going astray since he himself is subject to weakness. This is why he has to offer sacrifices for his own sins as well as for the sins of the people. And no one takes this honor on himself, but he receives it when called by God, just as Aaron was in the same way. Uh-huh. Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest. But God said to him, you are my son. Today I become your father. And he says in another place, verse six, you are a priest forever. 
not after the order of Aaron, mm -hmm. not the Arianic priesthood, mm -hmm. but after the order of Melchizedek. Come on, church. Mm -hmm. So this is important because some people, some people's issue. So in the text, he's trying to sift them from an old idea of priesthood mm -hmm. so they can shift to a new idea of priesthood. And the reason some people can't get better is because um, Jesus, this is important, they are not embracing, embracing. Jesus as their priest. Come on now. Yeah. So it's, it's almost as if in certain religious circles, the ministry of Jesus stops after the resurrection. Yeah. That's not the book. Mm -hmm. That's not the Bible. Uh -huh. it's not. After the resurrection, that was the ascension. After he proved himself mm -hmm. with many infallible proofs, there was an ascension. ascension. Yep. And after the ascension, come on, was the descension of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yep. Right. So the story is not over. He went up so that the Holy Spirit can come down. But when the Holy when he went up, the Holy Spirit came down, but he sat down. Mm -hmm. Jesus did. Yeah. On the right hand of the Father. And now hey. my Savior hey. has become my priest. Come on. <laughs> so he's pleading my case. Good God Almighty. On. So he's saying, when you talk to God, you don't deserve an answer. Uh -huh. You hadn't met the Fulfillment. You, uh -huh. you, me, you hadn't fulfilled the requirements of the law mm -hmm. that would merit you getting an answer. So when you ask him something, ask him my use my name. Use my name. <laughs> name drop. You got a name drop. You got to name, name drop. drop. Yeah. You use my name, name and the father will respond to you like he would respond to me because you came in my name. I'm your, I'm your, I'm your priest. And as our priest, He's our intercessor, uh, and he is also our interceptor. My God. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I, I, I think this is an act. I think things, can't, things won't get better in certain people's lives, specifically spiritually, until they understand that the ministry of Jesus didn't stop at the resurrection. Right, right. Pastor, this is one of the things I said. It's, it's like when we look at Jesus, is how some of us are stuck because we want to experience Jesus on our own terms. Mm -hmm. Or we want to, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we want to experience mm -hmm. Jesus at the expression we want. Mm -hmm. So we, we we don't have a problem with Jesus being saved. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to priest, yes, you know, we yeah. we have a problem. We want Jesus to save us. Yeah, we want to we want Him to snatch us out of stuff. That's good. But we don't want Him to be the Lord of our life because if we listen to Him more as Lord, we wouldn't need Him much as Savior. I don't want to rush past this. We got, we got some more points, but I don't want to rush past this because I want people to understand the implications of this practically. Right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because there's, when you, and I'm not, I'm not saying to the people about the people that are part of our Thrive Tribe, but right. I'm saying in my experience, right. in my spiritual journey, mm -hmm. if you had asked me about Jesus and his priesthood, I wouldn't have anything to tell you. Nothing. You understand what yeah. I'm saying? Like, like, I wouldn't have, it would just, it, I wouldn't have anything to tell you. Right. Not understanding that I saw him as savior. Mm -hmm. I saw him as the propitiation yeah, okay. of my sin. Yes, right. I didn't see him as a priest. Come on. Yeah. And I didn't know how important it was to see him that way. Because if you can shift mm -hmm. in the way you see, see him, him and see him now, not just as savior, but also as priest, that shifts your prayer life. It does. Y'all aren't talking to it me. Does. I'm going to show you later in the book of Hebrews mm -hmm. when you understand. Mm -hmm. That he's priest. Mm -hmm. Now you come boldly before the throne. Don't mess with me. <laughs> you come boldly before, before the throne of grace. grace. Your prayer life is inconsistent because you don't see him as it's, priest. Your come on. Your bold, the boldness with which you approach him yeah. is impacted. You approach timidly mm -hmm. because you don't see him as priest because mm -hmm. you're still trying to come in your own righteousness. That is the issue. Yeah. You're still you My still think God. he's going to respond to you based on the week you had. Because you're still coming in your own name. You're not coming in his name. You don't realize he's intercepting your request. Y'all missed it. Hey, Pastor. That when you make a request to the Father, Jesus say, give me that. Yes. And now Jesus presents it to the Father on your behalf. And the reason some people are stuck with stagnant and they don't have mountain moving prayer. They don't have miracle work in prayer. They don't have body healing prayer. They don't have door opening prayer. They don't have favor experience in prayer. It's because they're trying to be their own priests. 
And the Bible says, and at the name of Jesus. Every. He shall bow. It's in the name. Tongue. It's in the name, y'all. It's in the name. In See, the name. This, this, this is important, guys. This is important. <laughs> let's, let's park here. We got to shift mm -hmm. and see him as priest. Peace. And this is why one theologian literally called the, the concept of grace scandalous. Scandalous grace. Yeah. He said, he said uh, uh, one writer says, grace, it's, an off it's offensive. Like some people, mm -hmm. <laughs> some people, especially the religious, they're offended by the fact mm -hmm. that God says, I'm going to respond to you based on what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. That when, when you pray, Jesus is not only your, your intercessor, he's the interceptor. He said, use my name and I'm going to advocate. Mm. I'm going to plead your case mm. to the Father. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to wow. use my access wow. and I'm going to use my influence and I'm going to plead your case. And some of our issue is you're trying to plead your own case. Lord. That's your issue. That's the issue. And I'm, I'm not even going to get into how some natural tendencies based on personal trauma, um, which can be uh, you experiencing something negative that shouldn't have happened or you not experiencing something mm -hmm. positive, positive that should have happened. Right. That's traumatic, too. Right. That can produce performance orientation. Mm -hmm. And then when you get a believer, when you become a believer, mm -hmm. if that issue and that matter of the heart is not exposed, you bring the performance orientation into your relationship with God. So now you're oriented toward performing oh, and earning. And so now you don't know how to, how to receive what you can't earn. Come on. That's so, oh man. Come on. You're trying to earn answer prayers. Mm -hmm. You're trying to earn yeah. the favor of God. Favor is undeserved. It's undeserved. <laughs> That's what makes it favor. Yeah. You don't deserve it. You don't deserve it a little bit. You don't deserve it. That's what makes it favor. And so what happens is there's this unconscious orientation Toward works righteousness. Mm -hmm. I'm not working to be right. Right. <laughs> I'm working out of my right. righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not working to, to be, be right, right with God. Jesus has made me right, right with God. God. Once I get a revelation of that, I live rightly now because I've been made righteous, but I'm living rightly because it's for my good and his glory, not my acceptance. Y'all missing what I'm saying? I'm living right because it's wise. Did you hear what I just said? I'm not living right just to be accepted by God. Jesus already done. has made at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. It is because of Jesus. So he has made me righteous. Now I, I want to live out that righteousness because that's the best way to live. That's the wisest way to live. Forgiving my enemies. That's the wisest way to live. Not lying. That's the wisest way to live. Not gossiping. That's the wisest way to live. So it's for my good and he gets glory out of that. But my relationship is not established because of that. Because on your best day, your righteousness is as filthy rags. That's the book. That's the book. That's the book. And so even when you say, I had a good week this week, that don't mean God agree. We own it. I'm on. We out here now. Doc. We out here now. I, just be, I had a good week this week. That doesn't mean God agree. You and God, God be like, do you know the stuff you thought? Do you know the stuff you that that you said in your heart? Do you know you, what you mean? You you had a you, you had a good week. You should just say it out loud. You said it though. Nobody hear you said, but you still said it. You still come on. What what, what you mean? And so you we gotta get this, guys. We gotta get it. We, we gotta, gotta get, get this. It. Paul says. He says. He's literally, he's saying, he says, I think it's in Romans 6. He says, should we therefore continue in sin that grace might have been? God, God forbid. forbid. And then he starts to tell you why. God forbid. He says, because, because whoever you yield your members to, your, your body to, he says, you become a slave. Yeah. You become a servant. Mm -hmm. So he's like, you don't want to be enslaved mm -hmm. to the wrong master. Come on. That's right. That's the book. Right? That's the book. Because cause if you don't stop when you can stop, there will be, will be a day when you want to and you can't. You can't. <laughs> So he's saying, don't do that. Yeah. Don't set yourself up like that. Right. Yeah. But that's the reason. Come on. Uh, but we can't walk that way if we don't see. We need to stop here because this is, I'm, I've learned and I'm learning mm -hmm. to be sensitive to 
when something might be new to the people you're ministering right. to, even if it's old to you. Yeah. 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 And to give people time to sit See. with something that just shifted their perspective of Jesus. Because if you were to ask the average believer, what is Jesus' priestly duty? They wouldn't even know. They wouldn't even know. They wouldn't even see it. Now. It's not their fault we hadn't taught them. Yeah. They wouldn't even see it. They know about the cross and the resurrection. They do not know how important it was for the ascension to take place. Jesus said, mm -hmm. and this is what, and, I, and they got a lot of criticism for this, like mm -hmm. Paul Morton. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of un, undue criticism, I think. And I was a part of not me personally, meaning, the, the, not, and not my dad because my dad leaned more theologically with Paul Morton. But you know, I grew up in the rural South of Mississippi. Right. And, and, when, and back when I was growing up, there was this movement called the Full Gospel Baptist Movement. Mm -hmm. yep. And Paul Morton was one of the visionaries of that, the visionary for that movement. And they just got a lot of criticism. And what Paul was saying is, hey man, all I'm saying is, we preaching saying he died, and early Sunday morning, he, he got, got up. All Bishop Morton was saying, that's not the end of the story. The Bible don't stop. The Gospels don't stop there. When he, when he so he's saying, so if you're stopping there, you're not preaching the full, full gospel. gospel. Yep. Yep. If the, uh, uh, we done. We done. <laughs> we done. My musician's about to come in. Come on. We, we done. We're not preaching the full gospel. Because what it, this is interesting, Doc. It's like, if the Holy Spirit doesn't come, I don't have help. I have help. So if you leave the Holy Spirit out, that's a huge chunk of the good news I need to know about. He must go away. So the Holy, the Holy Spirit, Spirit, who's going to be my director? Mm -hmm. Bible says he's going to lead and guide me into all truth. Yeah. The Holy Spirit, who's going to be my developer? developer. Yeah. The Bible says he's going to convict me and shape me and mold me. The Holy Spirit is going to be my uh, distributor. He's going to yeah. distribute to me yeah. spiritual yeah. gifts yeah. that I need to be who's God called me to be and, and do um, what, what God's called me to do. Mm -hmm. I'm missing out on that because yeah. you didn't tell me about that. Yeah, no, that is a part of the good news. Yeah. His ascension, the descension of the Holy Spirit and him taking his seat as priest who say, I'm intercepting your request and I'm bringing them to the Father in my name. In my name. And Pastor, you used a powerful analogy several years ago that I think is, uh, is helpful in giving us the right perspective how to see Jesus. Because I think in order to see Jesus as a priest, there's some sifting has to take place in our heart. Yeah. And you said our heart is a throne, not a couch. That's right. Yeah. And so what we have to do is we have to get rid of all the unbiblical iterations of Jesus that we got set up in our heart. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Not only do we have to get rid of all the iterations of Jesus, but all the other stuff <laughs> that we're trying <laughs> to force Jesus to share. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're, yeah. we're, we're trying to force Jesus yeah. to share yeah. space mm -hmm. with only he should occupy. Mm -hmm. So it means we got to get rid of the couch, which is the analogy of more than one thing in our life. Mm. And rightly place the throne in which Jesus sits on. Yeah. And yeah. it's only when we That's right. We can see him. Yeah. See him in the fullness of who he is. In the fullness of who he is. And that's what this that's what this shift is about. It's not that maybe we've even saw Jesus incorrectly, it's incomplete. Yeah. If your view of Jesus does not see him now. So, like, you had to see him mm -hmm. in Mary's belly. Yeah. yeah. Leaping uh -huh. when she met Elizabeth. Now you need to see him born in the manger. <laughs> then you need to see him at 12. Uh -huh. Saying, should I not be about my father's business? You need to see him on that cross on Golgotha's hill. You need to see him being laid in that tomb. And you need to see him getting up early Sunday morning. And that's where most people's view of Jesus ceases. But after he got up, he went up. And you need to see him ascending. And after he ascended, the Holy Spirit came Amen. down. So you need to see that. That's the pneuma Christos. What's that? That is the spirit Amen. of Jesus. The spirit of Christ. The spirit that was in him that empowered him to be who he was and do what he did. Jesus said, I'm going to give you that. That's why he said, I got to leave. Because I can, if, if I don't leave, he can't come. 
And if he and if he can't come, you can't be like me. Yeah. I'm teaching you to be like me, but you don't have the the ability to be like me. You don't have the power to be like me, to be a martyr, to lay down that old life and pick up a new one, which is the word Greek word for witness. Like you don't have the power to do that unless he comes. And when he comes, you can break habits you couldn't break before. You could see things you couldn't see before. You hear things you couldn't hear before. You sense things you couldn't sense before. You can do things you couldn't do before. So you got to see him as that. And now the one who sits <laughs> on the throne at the right hand of our Heavenly Father as your intercessor praying for you. Good God Almighty. And then your interceptor intercepting your prayers. Don't you bring this in your name. It won't get through, but bring it in mine. And I'm praying that God sets some of us free from this yoke. Because um, here it is. You live on the level of your revelation. Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't have this revelation of Jesus as priest, yeah. there's a level you're not living. You're bound to another. You're bound to a level of works righteousness, which only leads to condemnation and guilt. And, and it never leads to righteousness. It doesn't lead to freedom. Here's what Paul says. The goodness of God is what leads us to repentance. So we're praying that that's broken over you. Jesus, the high priest, not after the Arianic order, but after the order of Melchizedek. And uh, maybe next week we'll talk a little bit about Melchizedek and that king and priest that he was. Man, we want to pray over you. Before we do, we just want to thank you for being a part of Thrive. We hope the ministry of God's word is adding value to your life. We're praying for you regularly yes. and uh, receiving, grateful for your prayer requests that are literally coming in uh, daily. And uh, we know prayer changes and things, and not, not, not just things, but everything. Thank you. Pastor, you'd be amazed at how many people don't have people that are praying for them. That's why we do it. Some people are the only Christian in their family. Yeah. Some people are the only serious one. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Somebody's That's true. married to somebody that they can't pray for. <laughs> Did you hear what I just I said? Heard it. They married to somebody that they, can't pray for. they can't pray for. So we take this really seriously here. And uh, it's our greatest work. And uh, we also want to create some space for your, your, uh, your giving watching this live or whether you're watching it on demand there are four things happening in this seek season for us at change church this lent season we're seeking the presence of god unusual we're studying the word of god with our lend devotion unusual unusual we're sacrificing giving up something to god unusually that's the fast right we're saying what do i need to give up and what do i need god to burn up what do I need God to burn into ashes? Come on. What do I need the fire, the presence of God to consume? What habit, what hang up that after Easter, I'm believing is no longer have a hold on me. Fasting. And then that final one is sowing. What am I sowing? And what do I want to reap? And so we aligned our season of first fruit giving with the season that was more consistent when they did it in scripture, which was closer to spring during harvest, right? So when crops would come up, they take the first. So it wasn't necessarily first of the years, first harvest, first fruit. They take a part of that first and say, you know what, hey, this, the whole row hadn't filled in yet, but I'm taking the first and I'm bringing it to you, God, because only you can fill the row. And as I bring you the first, come on, I believe you're gonna fill the row. And so we just want to create space. This is a time of unusual sowing for us. We do two times of over and above giving at Change Church. Mm -hmm. One is at the end of the year, legacy offering. That's for God's house. Mm -hmm. that's, how, that's for gospel expansion. That is how we build buildings and um, acquire campuses and uh, engage in initiatives that they help us change people's lives. When we do first fruit, it's not selfish. That's for our house. We are attaching faith to that seed, saying, God, there is something I am believing. I'm not buying a blessing. I'm using faith. And my faith is expressed through this seed. So um, as you give tonight, we want you to give in faith during this seek season here at Change Church. 
Um, so Father, we just love you and pray blessing on each and every person that is that is watching whenever they're watching. Yes, Lord. I pray that you make the soil of their heart receptive to the seed of your word. Bring forth fruit, a fruit of freedom. Open our eyes to see Jesus. Yes, Lord. Not just the Savior, but his priest. Yes, priest. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And love you. See you next love week. You. Well, listen, thank you for watching Thrive. I want you to make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of our teachings. And remember, you can watch me live at Thrive every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern.